and um, it's something that has seriously dented their credibility along with a number of other things. Um, my own view is if I had the power, I'd close down uh, Peter tomorrow and give the money to the grassroots. That, that's my own opinion because I'm, I'm a grassroots person, I always have been. And I, I personally got an issue with the national groups. That itself wouldn't solve the issue that you raised because when you've got a large population of uh, other animals which are being bred, they're coming along, you know, it's a production line situation, and essentially the animal movement is there as a mechanism to mop it up. It becomes very problematic, very, very problematic, in, in the sense that there's always going to be more in need than you can deal with, either financially, in terms of space. Like I say, they always become full, and then they always become overcrowded. There's, an, there's a sanctuary in Ireland at the moment who is battling to stay unovercrowded because the people running it want to care the best for the other animals there, but they're, they're under pressure to take more and more all the time because the need is there. So that's, that's that issue on that one. Um, animals killing others. The, the usual stock answer to that is that there's a difference between moral patients and moral agents. So human beings are seen as moral agents who therefore can think about ethics, can think about uh, right and wrong, and consequently other animals can't do that because they're moral patients. There is another issue about, because uh, I think you jokingly produced a, um, a group for this occasion, what was it called, carnivores everywhere, right? Okay, now the thing is, you know, biologically we're not carnivores. Yeah, uh, but there are some beings who are obligate carnivores, so they've got an issue. There are some voices in the movement, and there is a movement now to try and get a completely vegan world, including non-human animals. It's a very controversial issue, um, and effectively it talks about using our growing, ironically, godlike powers in order to bring about a society where there is no predation. Now, most people, even within the movement, tend to reject that and go back to the agents and, and uh, uh, issue on that one. So that's the kind of basic argument uh, for that one. Ritual slaughter. Um, ritual slaughter has always been an, an issue within, within the movement. There's a, there's a problem in terms of the social movement there because it's very easy to get caught in, in a kind of racist issue. And also, then you... Then you're there, and it's a little bit like far, far gras, really. Then you're there in an issue of picking out what you have constructed as the worst and egregious uses. In, in broad animal rights philosophy terms, all use is wrong. And so they don't then try and make this kind of hierarchy of suffering, you know. Although some people think, well, you know, that is obviously worse than this and this kind of thing. And so people can see a difference between, say, a crowded battery cage and a genuine free-range farm, for example. That doesn't get rid of all the ethical problems, obviously, because there's obviously still debeaking uh, often, often um, things like foot force uh, molting, but then they all end up in the same slaughterhouse as well. So that, that doesn't um, um, solve the issue. So ritual slaughter is something that he's campaigned against, but in a kind of careful way and in a way that's non-racist because, or at least that's the ideal, because it's very easy to tar another. It's a creation of another uh, other, if you like. And we actually see this going on even with um, sea shed issues. So you see on Facebook a lot of racist comments about the Chinese and the Japanese, for example, you know, tarring uh, other people, uh, you know, other races, other kind of societies. Um, in a kind of broad brush sense. So there are, there are these campaigns, but they're carefully done or should be um, on that one. So that's ritual slaughter. Um, the, this question about do we call animals humans? Um, no, I mean, there, 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 is, there is no there's no animal rights philosophy that tries to suggest that any other animal is a human being. And in fact, that leads to um, a statement about animal rights. Animal rights is a very modest idea. 
It is an extensionist idea, so that means it's breaching those concentric circles. So it's trying to expand outwards in the same way as rights had done that. So if you look back at the history of rights, it was a very bourgeois male idea, and then it extended, you know, as people questioned the scope of it. And so the next extension would be across the species barrier rather than the gender barrier or the racial barrier, that kind of thing. You know, so there is that issue, but no, but you know, no, nobody is trying to establish human rights for other animals. It's a very basic idea. So the rights that are claimed for other animals are basic rights, and they're usually described as negative rights rather than positive rights. So a negative right is something like the right to life, the right to bodily integrity, those kind of things. A positive right would be like the right to education, which no one applies to other animals. So there's no move, really, to move other animals into a human category. There's, there's no philosopher that stands for that. So it's, you know, it's kind of not an issue. In terms of line drawing, th that is true. In, in, in animal rights philosophy and in the movement, there's line drawing um, to some extent, in the sense that um, you do have a kind of hierarchy that's been constructed. So there are some people who talk about insect rights, for example, which don't go down too well in the social movement aspect when you're trying to convince people um, you know, about, about issues. And so people, some people in the movement will, cl will claim that that makes our job harder. Whether it does or not is debatable, but some people will claim that, and so that's why they are wary of, of those kind of ideas. What Tom Reagan suggests, who's a philosopher who wrote the case for animal rights in 1983, is that there is this issue of line drawing, but we should always draw lines in pencil because they're going to move. And they will move uh, quite often because of that new discipline that I mentioned, cognitive ethology, because we're learning more and more now about other animals. So in some senses, more and more are fitting our uh, criteria, if you like. But the criteria isn't that other animals have to be like us. It's the fact that we would tend to look at who is sentient in the world. Now, obviously, you could say, well, that just means that who is sentient like us. But essentially, what we're trying to do is say, well, you know, who is sentient in the world? And we recognize ourselves as sentient as well. But it's not, it's not a kind of search for you know, who can live up to our standards. It's a question of, you know, there is this moral category, the sentient, who is involved. And that breaches the, the species barrier. So I think that one uh, goes to that one. Um, this idea of uh, people will, will kill a thousand chimps or whatever to save a niece, um, it's quite interesting. It, 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 um, this this uh, argument was, was answered once by um, Stephen Wise, who is an animal rights lawyer. And um, he was interviewed, I think, by um, Jeremy Paxman of Newsnight. And, uh, Stephen Wise has, has got two has got twins, and he said, "Okay, well, you know, you stand for the rights of great apes, but you know, who would you choose? Would you would you sacrifice great apes, you know, uh, to save your twin daughters?" And he said, "Well, of course I would. So I I kill them all." He said, "But I kill you as well, you know, <laughs> which is why morality is not dependent on what an individual would do, because we would all possibly make those in in the kind of Situation of extremists, we would go, I'll kill everybody to save you. Now, that's no model for a working out what's right and wrong on a societal level. So I think that's, that's that, that kind of issue. It kind of recognizes the psychology of wanting to protect those who are special to you. At the same time, there would be a critique of it, and uh, it never gets brought into law because it just couldn't work. Who would you say, me or a chimp? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, would, I, would, I would take it on a case-by-case -case basis. <laughs> <laughs> um,